Hi everyone, how you doing? It's Reverend Paul here from St. Augustine of Canterbury and the Send, God's Church Deployed, coming to you again with this week's message from the truck. It's uh, great to be here with you on a rather blustery and cold kind of day here in the Windsor area. Uh, feels like spring is trying to make its appearance just around the corner. The sun is shining and the sky is blue, but this winter seems to just want to hold on. It's that uh, season that doesn't want to let go this year. I think we're in uh, fake spring at the moment, uh, knowing that we're still a couple of days away from the big celebration of a new season coming upon us as we can finally say goodbye to winter. Just wanted to uh, brought, bring some items to your attention and uh, share a couple thoughts on this week's gospel as we prepare ourselves for Sunday the 19th of March. That'll be the fourth Sunday of Lent. We're pretty much halfway through at this point. Uh, we're continuing to make our journey th towards Holy Week and uh, just a couple more weeks until Palm Sunday, for example. But for right now, I just want to focus on the, the uh, a couple of things that happen in the community. First of all, a huge thank you to everyone who made uh, St. Augustine's St. Patrick's Day party a, a an event, an event of the year, if you will. I mean, it's only March, so it's possible it's an event of the year, uh, but it was a, a great event. Uh, lots of folks out. We had uh, almost 50 people out for, for dinner and for some singing and for some dancing, uh, and it was really just a great time. So thank you to the kitchen crew and to the cleanup crew uh, for preparing and and cleaning up after our meal. Uh, thanks to the uh, crew that set up our hall for us. Uh, thanks to Anne McCollum, who came out and taught us our dance. Thanks to Jonathan, who shared his gift of music with us yet again. And a big thank you to all of you who came out and joined us. Uh, hopefully you had a good time. It looked like there were lots of smiles. Lots of Irish eyes were smiling as we uh, made our way from the parish hall there at St. Augustine on Friday. So thank you to everyone who made that possible. Just uh, interesting, one of the things that came up in the St. Augustine, or pardon me, in the St. Patrick's Day event, we watched a little video of a, a young woman, a, a mom from um, Ireland, who was sharing a little bit of the St. Patrick's traditions and mythology and that kind of thing with us. And one of the things she was talking about was that uh, idea of St. Patrick driving out the snakes out of Ireland. And we all know that that's just a myth. There were no snakes in Ireland, and uh, really there was nothing for him to do. But there's lots of other ways to think about how that phrase might be trying to be used uh, when we hear that myth. But it's amazing how many times we hear stories and we believe them sometimes and we don't believe them other times, uh, and yet we continue uh, to to look out for or to share or to uh, speak for ourselves those stories that somehow people just refuse to believe. This week in our gospel, we have one of those stories, right? We have one of those uh, messages that sounds too good to be true, and yet we have witnesses to it. Uh, we have lots of folks who uh, were present, uh, even the, the parents of one man, uh, who show us that it actually was a real event. It was a, a true happening. And of course, I'm speaking about the blind man. Uh, the blind beggar who, uh, in John's gospel this week, Jesus heals by spitting and making some mud in, in, and rubbing that mud on the man's eyes, and he was suddenly able to see. And right away, we have all kinds of people questioning, well, no, that couldn't possibly be true. This is, you're not even the same guy that was the blind one who was uh, begging by the pool. And all of this constant questioning, this constant, I don't believe you, I need more proof, um, the, the Pharisees saying, well, this man can't possibly be the one who would work a miracle. He, he works on the Sabbath. How would a sinner be given that kind of authority? Even this man's parents who were questioned and said, who is, is this your son? Is this the man who was born blind? Uh, even the parents aren't willing to admit to it and say, no, you figure it out for yourselves. I wonder sometimes, you know, we get we get a little bit caught up in that even today. This is like a 2,000-year-old a fake news social media post, right? People refusing to believe what they've uh, heard, refusing to believe even some of them what they've seen. And how many times in our social media life today do we find that same thing? People will post something and we'll say, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. That sounds like That sounds like it's not true. It sounds like it can't possibly be real. And we start to get to the point where we can't even un uh, accept and acknowledge those pieces of news that are true. It's become really hard for us to discern between truth 
and falsehood, between real and fake. And as we make that journey, it's getting harder and harder for us to be able to trust people. We don't know if we can trust those uh, voices that we've always thought we could trust. We don't know if we can uh, truly believe those voices that we've always chosen to believe. And yet here in scripture, we have an example of Jesus saying, that's fine. You don't have to believe. You don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to jump on board and be part of my team. You don't have to take the, the, the eyewitnesses accounts for it. I'm still going to heal. I'm still going to bring sight to the blind. It doesn't matter if you want to believe me. I'm still going to do the work, says Christ. And how many times do we need to do that same thing in the way that we evangelize? How many times do we get ourselves caught up with uh, somebody questioning what we believe, something in our faith, and say, well, how can you possibly believe that there's a God when tornadoes happen that destroy people's lives or when hurricanes happen that kill people? And we have to stand back and say, okay, that's what you believe and that's all right, but I'm still going to profess the good news. I am still going to declare the gospel. Even if you don't believe me right now, even if you know that you have seen God and yet you still refuse to believe my testimony, that's okay. Because we as Christians are called to continue to testify. We are called to continue to tell our Christian story, to tell the good news of the resurrection, to tell the good news that God loves us. And when we do continue to do that, we continue to be the light for the world, that light which breaks the darkness, destroys blindness, and brings clarity and vision to us all. I'm going to leave it at that for right now. Just the idea that even in the midst of our choosing to not believe, Jesus continues to offer his ministry. And we need to do the same when people refuse to believe, when people continue to refuse to uh, to listen to what it is that we want to share, it doesn't mean we stop. It means we keep bringing light to the world, as Christ has called us to do. All right. Well, from that, I've just got a couple of quick announcements. First of all, our Bible study continues on Tuesday. We have Reverend Ryan this week taking us through the uh, lectionary for tomorrow, for the 19th of March. Uh, we look forward to that on Tuesday at 7 p.m., St. David and St. Mark, the Church of St. David and St. Mark on Bing Road here in Windsor are having a community meal. That's taking place uh, at the end of the week. I think it's on Friday. Yes, it's on Friday from 5 o'clock till 7 o'clock. Uh, and there's a poster for that in the deployment docs. So if you haven't already signed up for those deployment docs, make sure you get them because there's important information in there that you don't want to miss out on. So uh, an opportunity to support the community meal. Uh, I think the poster has the prices on it. I think it's uh, $25 a couple or $15 a person or something to that effect. But it's all the details are there in the poster. We are slowly, I guess, but rather quickly at the same time making our way to Holy Week. And there will be a schedule of services coming out very shortly uh, for all of those uh, special services, those midweek services, those evening services, and of course, uh, the Triduum services on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. So keep an eye out for all of those service times and locations as we continue to make this march towards the great celebration. I think that's probably going to be sufficient for today. My friends, why don't you keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down? Blessings to you all from this week's Message from the Truck. Bye for now. Music